Hey guys, Dark with Cyclone FPV, and I've had a couple of people send me uh, some questions about the Horus X10 and how to do the upgrade to the uh, using the access module and do the firmware upgrade. Uh, and then I had somebody just send me their radio, so I'm going to go over a few things here with you. Kind of hope to uh, settle some of the issues, answer some of the questions. That is, so and let me see if I can get this all this zoomed in. There we go. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to show you something real quick so that we can uh, I can explain to you what we're going to be talking about. So let me just show you this real quick. Okay, so let's just say, and this part you don't have to worry about yet, I'm just going to intentionally do this wrong uh, so that I can uh, show you exactly some of the errors that people are getting and how to work past those errors. Another thing that I want you to do uh, know is that we're going to go into OpenTX real quickly just to show you what firmware to download and what to avoid, okay? So uh, let me get, while this is updating here, which really isn't that important, let me do this here. Okay, so I'm going to open OpenTX here. All right, it should be opening here in just a second. And then this page will also be important, but <clears throat> um, right now we're going to go to OpenTX first. Okay, so in OpenTX, the one thing, one of the most important things that you have to make sure you do is under your settings for your radio, okay, make sure that you have the correct radio. Obviously, you want to select the X10, X10S. And you need to make sure that you only check this box and you do not check external access mod, okay? You're checking internal access mod only, all right? Please be sure that when you're doing this, now in my case I have, I mean, when I say only, I mean you'll see two things referencing access here, in external access and internal access. I'm saying only check this one. Do not check this one here. And you're going to fly, you can check the Flex uh, uh, R9M, the Lewis scripts, and the Noheli. That's fine. That's how I've done my radio. But some people seem to forget this one. Please make sure to put a check mark here. Please do not put a check mark here. Once you do that and you click OK, I'm going to cancel because I've already done this. Then you want to go ahead and download your firmware and load that firmware. Now that is the same process no matter what you're doing. So all the OpenTX tutorials on that, that's how you do that. But make sure you get that firmware downloaded, OK? All right. Now, the other thing is, um, uh, let me see. Sorry, I just had a message come across my screen. Um, all right, so now let's get back to our radio, okay? Because here's what people, it's still writing, but I'm going to show you what they're seeing. So make sure that you download. And then and then also, actually, we can go back here real quickly. Um, when you do your uh, firmware update, right? So you're going to, once you download this and you have your radio plugged in, you're going to download it, save it, and then flash it. Right, and this tutorial isn't really about that because it's standard on the same as doing any OpenTX. Just make sure you flash your bootloader. Now, I've changed the method I usually use for flashing the bootloader. You know how um, when you put this in DFU mode or what have you, uh, you slide your two sliders into the center, you press your power button, and then it gives you the screen where you can plug in your USB. And I'll show you that real quickly. This part I will show you just because I don't want to just say, hey, here's an option, and I don't show you how to do it. but. I'll show you how I do my bootloader now, and I, I kind of like this method a little bit more uh, just because I like watching the computer do it. Now, let me show you the error people are getting first of all, okay? So we have a model set up here, and if you look at, oh, 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 here, let me just, you see this model, so if I go back to the main page and I hit, uh, and I hit uh, model, hold it down, right? You see, I've got model one here, right? And if I scroll up, I've got it using ISRM, which is the internal module. So if you look at your options here, this should be, this is the one you're gonna see. And then you can go here and you could turn this to D16 or you could turn it to access, right? So we're using access. Let me put this back. Okay, so here's what happens though, right? So if you hold your system button down and you hold your page button and go backwards and you click models RX version, it's gone, right? There's nothing listed under internal module, and that's a firmware issue. So I'm gonna show you what to do to fix that, but let me touch up on this bootloader real quick, right? So there's obviously a couple ways, and I'm not giving this as a podium for everybody to chime in on what they think is best. I'm showing you uh, a way to do it that allows, that I use uh, if I wanna make sure everything's loading properly, right? So I'm gonna show you this real quickly. So I'm gonna power this off. Okay, now, you know that if you hold the sliders in, and you press the power button and you wait, now you're going into, you, you've got everything loaded here and you're ready to write to firmware. You plug in your USB cable like this, right? And then you'll, you'll see here, uh, it says USB connected. And then on your computer here, uh, you are ready to go, right? You could flash your firmware. So, uh, uh, you know, we'll do, it, we'll do it real quickly, I guess. Um, so if you flash your firmware, uh, you would select where you want to download here. It's opened up already. <clears throat> 
Okay, so you would download it and then and then if I've already downloaded mine, so you would click here and you would click right firmware to radio, right? And if you did that, you would locate the firmware. I've got mine here saved in customer X10, SD card, blah, 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 and it's right here. This is the firmware that I just downloaded and it has iAccess, which means internal access module. I, I named it that way so that I could keep track of the different firmware, okay? All right, now, once you've done that, and you, I guess we'll, we'll do it very quickly here, just in case you hadn't done it. So, so here's the process, right? You come over here after you've done your settings, right? You come over here and you click, uh, you can click download firmware, and uh, you're going to get an option here as to where you want to put it. Now, I've I put mine here in the SD card folder I created. It's a whole different tutorial, but basically, I put it in an SD card uh, folder that will synchronize with here. So I named it. Uh, this one, uh, 2.3.5. You can see I had 2.3.4 prior, 2.3.5, right? Once I do that, whoops, right here. Once I do that and I click save, uh, yeah, I'll replace it. It's no big deal. So let me replace it. And then once you do that, it's going to ask you if you want to write. So I'm going to click yes. We'll just go through this real quickly. So we're going to write it, okay? And it's this, this is actually pretty quick. Okay, we got to wait for this to be finished. And then I'll bring this back up. I didn't mean to drag this off the screen here. There we go. Okay, and don't worry about the not responding. That's okay. So click OK, click Close. All right. Now, what we want to do here is we want to come over here to this USB icon right here, and you want to right click on it and left click on Eject. And then you want to do it again, Eject. I just go through both of them, whether they're there or not. See, now they're gone. And now I'm going to disconnect the cable. Okay, so now we'll go back here. So we've got the cable disconnected, and I'm going to go to Exit. Okay, now. There's two ways you can do this, right? The very, 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 very simple way is to hold your system button down, hit page one time. If you've loaded the firmware onto your SD card, and I've got mine organized here. Well, this is this gentleman's SD card, so I just put it on here. But if you lowered it, then it would be located here. Now, I haven't synchronized the two, right? Especially if I'm working on a customer's radio, I'm not gonna put files on his uh, card that he may not need or doesn't want. So if you did have it here, then you would just click it, and then it would say flash bootloader. But here's what I like to do just to make sure things are going good and I can watch my computer screen, especially if it's somebody else's radio and I'm not gonna load a bunch of files onto their radio, okay? So I'm gonna power this off. And, and I would encourage you to try this. I mean, I, I actually prefer this method more because I can see the screen, uh, I can see the computer screen going the way I want. So now, power's off, right? So with the power off, don't push any buttons, just plug in your USB, okay? Your computer will initialize. All right, and now if you just if you just wait a minute here, I don't remember if I have to. I don't think I have to wait very long here, but I'm gonna now go to the same icon right here. Okay, you see where it says this is what you were using when you had it in and you and you uh, put your sliders in. You had it in DFU mode, right? Same same icon, but now with the radio off, it does a different thing, right? So you click this, find your firmware. Now it's already preloaded here because I just did the firmware update on it. Okay, and I click right to TX. Now here's what it does. Now it's flashing the bootloader, okay? And now you can watch it. And you can see if there are any errors, anything else going on, but this is something, if people forget to flash their bootloader, and this also applies to people who brick their radios. A lot of people will do a flash upgrade, but they will forget to do their bootloader, and they end up bricking the radio. This is how you unbrick your radio. You go into the bootloader, you flash your bootloader this way, because if you try it the other way with the SD card, you can't turn it on, so you can't flash it. This is the surefire way to make sure that you can flash your bootloader and get out of a bricked radio. And also you can watch the screen here and you can see, hey, I'm watching the process, everything's going. It takes a little bit longer, but I'm the old school method kind of guy. I like watching things happen and being able to diagnose if there's an error anywhere in between. If there is an error, it will be printed on this screen, okay? So my, my, my method is this. It works all great the other way until you have a problem. Once you have a problem, this method saves, saves you a ton of time and money. So just do this method from the beginning if you'd like, and you can avoid some of these hassles. Just an idea, but it is a good way to do it, and it also works, especially if you're not using an SD card, okay? So let's just wait here real quickly. I'm gonna let this finish, and we're gonna watch it together here, uh, and I'm gonna try to find my coffee. I think that's important. Yep, that's my coffee. Okay, so I'm going to get the web page ready while that's updating. Actually, I can't because it's going to interfere with what you see, so I'll just wait.
Let's just give it a little bit of time. I mean, it's, there's no harm in giving a few minutes to know that you're doing something right. So we'll take our time and we'll make sure that everybody's learning it the right way. Okay? And also, this is the module the gentleman took out. He sent this with me. Uh, he did an excellent job installing, by the way. I mean, I opened the radio up. Everything was perfectly done. Well done. Extremely well done. So uh, everything was done properly. The issue here is going to be the firmware that was – or the, the – um, the, uh, the firmware for the internal access module, okay? So I've, re, I've, re, uh, I've updated our website and the link to give you the new version that will, that should bypass all this anyway. So we're gonna wait here, we're gonna wait. Just give it a little bit longer. You can fast forward if you want. I mean, you're not forced to watch this green bar move, but I am forced to watch it move. Okay, so now that we're done, okay, we're gonna click close. See, everything is done. Everything worked perfect, okay? Now we're gonna click close. We're gonna go back to our USB icons, eject the STM32 bootloader. Okay, now it's safe to remove it, unplug it. Now, let's head back to our radio, okay? We don't need the computer anymore, so now we're just at the radio, okay? All right, so when we turn the radio on. Welcome to OpenTX. Now, you'll only hear these voices if you have the SD card, and this, this needs to be calibrated, but you'll only hear this if you have the SD card. So. Uh, if you don't have the SD card, you won't hear any sounds, obviously. Um, all right, so now let's go back and let's look at our modules RX version, okay? And you'll still see there's no internal module, okay? And this is because the firmware is wrong. So let me show you. Here's what we're going to do. So let's head back to our computer. Minimize OpenTX. We don't need it anymore. Okay, now I'm going to go, if you go to cyclonefpb.com and if you go to the search bar and you type... Uh, X10. I don't know if you have to type the word. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Something's hitting my keyboard. Sorry. Uh, let's type. Uh, we'll just type Horus X10. I don't know if you have to. I can't remember if that's how I had it. Sorry, I can't see. H O R U S X10. Let me just hit it. Okay. And then right here, you see this? Free Scout. Okay, so I'll put a link to this. Uh, in this description here. So you'll see it if you scroll down into the description. When you click this. All these instructions are here, by the way. This is the part that's important. You need to click this file. Now, you must have an SD card to make this work, okay? Because you have to get that file onto this radio, right? So when you click this and download it, I'm gonna do it again, I mean, just to show you. Okay, so here's a difference. And let me show you the difference between these. Let's go to downloads. There are two files that look almost identical. You have this one that's called FWX10SISRM, and this is the one that you'll find on the FreeSky website sometimes when you're referencing the, the, the mod or upgrading the X10. Are you leaving? I am. We're oh. uh, the person's drone that you took. Didn't go back out. Sorry, guys, one second. Um, that one's good to go. Okay. And that's the, um, yeah, that one's good to go. And then uh, the other one is here. Oh, is there a video on this? Yeah. Did you already send it? I don't know if I updated it. I don't think you have this. I think you have asked about it. Okay, so here's this one. That's the gentleman's petrol 75. Okay. That's it. All right. Okay? I will do that. Okay. You good? Uh-huh. You can open the doors if you want. Okay. All right. All right. See you in a little bit. All right, I love you. Love you. You sure you don't need me to go? Okay, don't talk to strangers. I won't. All right. Try to save, Mama. Yes, sir. Love you. Love you, babe. Puppies have been out. Okay. Thanks, Mama. Uh-huh. All right, guys. So getting back to this real quickly. Um, so you have these two that look somewhat identical, right? And here's where the issue seems to come in. You need this one right here. And this is the one that the link now, my update, will take you to this new link here, okay? So you'll get this one right here that's, remember just the X in front of the 10, the X in front of the 10 uh, uh, S Express. Remember, it's just all bunched together. That's what it looks like, and that's the file you need. When you get there, you're going to right-click on this, and you're going to left-click on Extract All, okay? And just click Extract, all right? Now it's going to show you the files. Here are the files right here, okay? Okay, with your radio on, and I will do it this way now, with your radio on, you would plug in your USB cable, just leave your radio on, plug in the USB cable, and you're gonna select on your screen, it's gonna say USB joystick, USB storage, or USB telemetry mirror. Go to USB storage and hit enter, okay? And then what it's gonna do is it's gonna bring up your SD card folder, right? And to be honest with you guys, if you're flying a FreeSky radio, 
have an SD card. I, I, they're so inexpensive and it just makes life a lot easier. All right, so here's the, here's the folder right here. And I've already done this, so you're gonna see the file in here, but under firmware, now this is the customer, so I didn't organize it this way. But if, if I usually have mine in OpenTX, uh, FreeSky, uh, you know, I usually have my firmware uh, um, organized. Uh, but anyways, you're gonna see here, there's two files. Here's the one not to load, and here's the one to load, okay? So I've already copied it over, but what you would do basically is you would go to your go to your folder here that we created. So let me let me go to that. Here's the uh, here's the extracted contents, right? Remember we just did the extraction there. So there it is right there. So go take this folder and you're going to right click and click copy, and then come over to your firmware folder. And I would I would tell you to go ahead and organize it. So I'm going to make a new folder here under firmware. And I'm going to call it fr oops fr sky tx fw. Okay. That stands for Free Sky Transmitter Firmware, and we consider the internal monitor transmitter. And then I'm going to paste right in here. Okay? All right. Now, I'm going to go back and clean his up a little bit. So I'm going to, I like to do my folders like this, and I don't think he's going to mind if I do this for him. Open TX-FW. Okay, and that's where that, uh, um, let me go ahead and get my, uh, let me go ahead and get that uh, download that I did earlier. So let me go to desktop. This is where I downloaded the firmware from OpenTX, but I never copied it onto his. I'm gonna go ahead and copy it here. So let me go to my SD card, go to firm, OpenTX. So it's just 15 right here. So I'm just gonna copy and I'm gonna go back and put it in his firmware folder under OpenTX. So he's got a copy of it. Okay, paste. All right. Okay, now I don't know if there are any receiver firmwares in here. I may have put one on here myself, uh, but I'm going to get rid of the rest of these folders now. Okay, let's delete that and then let's delete. Let's just keep it organized, okay? Uh, this must have been his OpenTX firmware. We're going to delete all that. Because I don't even know. Does he even. Yeah, okay, let me do uh, delete. Yes. Okay, so we have our firmware loaded, right? So we have our FreeSky TX firmware, which is the ISRM module firmware, and then we have our OpenTX firmware. All right, so here's what we wanna do. Now, now that we've got this here, we've copied it over. So what we can do now is we can safely eject. So eject, and we're gonna safely eject again, and that should, hopefully, I think that, they, yeah, there we go. Now we're gonna unplug the USB, and we're gonna get back to our radio, okay? So. Remember, we have no internal US module. It's not showing, I mean, internal module. So let's hit return. All right, now we're gonna to go to system and then we're gonna to go to page, go to our firmware, see how we've got it organized now. Free Sky, there's the folder we copied over. Remember, it's the X in front of the 10, the X in front of the 10 S Express, okay? And there's no spaces between the words. You can download that from the site. Then you find this file right under here, right? The ISRM-S, hold that down and then click the flash internal module, okay? So we're gonna let that run real quickly. And while that's running, I'm gonna put that in the corner of the screen here, just like that. And I'm going to, let me see. Let me see what I got here. Just to make sure on our page, okay. So I will provide this link for you guys so you can get to it. That will now download for sure. That one will download. <clears throat> Everything else is here on how to do it. All right, so I think that does pretty much handle it. So as long as you have done your OpenTX with internal access mod firmware update and you've downloaded the correct FreeSky firmware update. Now, the, uh, once you do that, you'll be fine, okay? Somebody also asked, asked me about the ethos, uh, and I'll answer that real quickly because I talked with FreeSky about it. The, uh, is it the ethos? Yeah, I think it was the ethos, yeah. Uh, the Ethos software, if I'm saying that right, because there's two of them, the FreeSky OS, the, I think it was the Ethos everybody's talking about. If you don't have an access module, uh, if you don't have an internal access module, uh, you cannot run an uh, uh, XJT or IXJT. Ethos won't, won't recognize it, okay? So it, it wasn't the FreeSky OS, it was the Ethos, yeah. So just keep that in mind is that you, you somebody had asked me about that before. Can you... Can you get this radio, add the, uh, or can you get this radio without the access mod, like the ones we were selling it as on a sale, and then upgrade the, or change the OS to the either? No, you cannot, okay? Um, what is the Free Sky OS? I don't remember now. You know what? Hold on a second. 
Uh, well, maybe the Free Skylights. Whichever one's a new one. Whichever one is the, 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 the newest one that's come out. You know what? As a matter of fact, let me just check. Let me just check. Because now I've worked on so many of these things, man, that I don't want to. I want to make sure I got it. So let me go to Free Skies website real quick. And let's go to the. Uh, let me go to the Horus series. Let's go to X10. X12, X10, doesn't matter. Oh, now it could be the Free Sky OS for all I know. Uh, let me see. Oh, no, I think it is Ethos. I'm pretty sure it is Ethos now. Because if I go back, sorry, I'm just, this is almost done and I'm sitting here. Yeah, it's the Ethos. So the Ethos will not will not recognize it. Let me see what they did on Free Sky OS. Because if I go back, and I know the radio's done. Uh, so if I go to the X10, the Horus X10, just now I have to see. So the Horus X10, right? Yeah, sorry, okay, that was correct. So it is the Ethos. So the Ethos OS has to have an access mod inside. It does not recognize XJT or IXJT. So if you bought this radio and you wanted to upgrade to Ethos, you have to put an access mod inside, okay? Uh, if you buy the X10, S Express or whatever, then you don't because it's already got everything there. It's already access ready. So just keep that in mind if you do decide you want to upgrade. Uh, and I did have, like I said, I had a customer who asked me about that and I had to find out. And sure enough, the Ethos does not recognize the IXJT. It's only uh, um, um, access mod. Okay. All right. Anyways, getting back to what we're doing here. Now let's go back and let's go to our system and let's go to our uh, internal. And all of a sudden now, We've got our 2.1.6 FCC internal access module and everything's working great. So the only thing left for this radio, and I'll show you why I say it's the only thing left, and I notice this when I turn it on, when I turn it on, to right, FTS. my throttle's all the way down and I still have a throttle warning, right? And then when I look at my sliders here, I mean, everything is just jammed. Everything's, nothing's moving center. So please make sure, I'm gonna do it for this gentleman here. Please make sure that you uh, do your calibration um, so set everything to the middle, right? Turn all your switches to the middle. And I'm gonna do it for this gentleman because I wanna just make sure before I send it back that all the switches are working and everything's calibrated. Hit enter, it says center, put everything in the center. Everything on the side is in the center. These are in the center. Uh, everything's looking good. So uh, yeah, let me hit enter. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and just gently, do not jam this, okay? Because nobody flies jamming these sticks. They it's just a night, so you should mimic how you fly because that's the kind of pressure you're going to put on the sticks. So don't go crazy with it. Just go up and down and just go, you know, up, down, left, right, left, right, left, right, up, down, up, down, and then take the sliders all the way up, all the way down, and then take your, all these, all the way left, all the way right, left, right, put it back to the center. And then this one usually takes me a couple clicks to do for it to catch up. So one, two. Go to two, come on. Three, four, five, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, these look good. So I think we're good there. These look good. All right, and when you're done, hit enter. All right, now, hopefully, if I turn this off and turn it back on, I will not have that error anymore, but let's see. Oh, well, I guess maybe I gotta go check my values then. So if you have that problem, I guess we'll just check this out real quick. So let's go to model and let's go to page, page, page. Let me see what my value is here. Uh, you know what? I don't think that this is set up. So let me, let me, let me get back. Okay. I'm gonna go to the system and I'm just gonna go to page to go to the setup here. So this hasn't been configured, so that's probably not gonna help me. So, whoops. Let me go to 2022. It is seven and it is 19, I think. 19. Sorry, this was not, I didn't expect to be doing this part, but um, it's important that I get this done. So I figured if you guys can benefit from it, great. The part about the access portion is finished. So if you don't want to watch any more, please, by all means, turn it off. Don't gripe at me. Okay, uh, let's do return. Yeah, that's why. So let's go to mode two. And, uh, oops. Let me see. I use.
Okay, now let me see. Okay, that should help. So let's see what happens here. Hopefully that gives us better. We don't have an error now. This is set for mode one. I mean, none of the rest of this stuff had been set up yet. So we go ahead and help the customer out and get this ready. Okay, good. So yeah, the throttle warning's gone. It's only fail safe, and that's fine because fail safe hasn't been set up yet. All right. So guys, that's pretty much it. Go back to the website. You'll see the link below. Make sure if you do have this problem and uh, and, you, and you're not getting your access module that you upgraded to show up. Download that firmware that's on the page. You'll see the link below to get to it. Download that, install it, and you'll be good to go. Make sure you've done your OpenTX firmware properly as well. And hey, that's pretty much it, guys. Please subscribe to the channel and support us. Uh, greatly appreciate that. I uh, want to say what's up to my kids, Ashley Lane and Jaden. They're not here today, but yesterday we had Jaden's 11th birthday. And let me tell you something, man. I had such a kick-ass time. We went fishing. He got a new fishing pole. We got, I don't know. I've never fished before, so I'm... I'm, I'm learning as I go here. Um, <clears throat> had a great time with the family. Hope you guys also had a good time too uh, with your family this weekend. And we will talk to you guys soon. God bless, guys. Be safe. Peace.